We present how to pose. The first method for animating Amnosis, a universal sign language's notation system into pose sequences. Amnosis is a generic lexical notation that allows describing any sign in any language by glyphs that describe the movement. There are glyphs that describe the hand shape, location, orientation, the movement itself, and more. Our method takes a Amnosis sequence's input and converts it into a sequence of poses signing the relevant sign. It is composed of two parts, the text processor, which is responsible for the amnosis encoding and the prediction of the sequence length to be generated, and a pose generator, which gets the encoded amnosis and one reference pose frame as inputs and converts them into a sequence of poses performing the relevant sign. The reference frame supplies the style of the generated pose. Using the reference, we can generate multiple sequences performed by the same signer and combine them into one long sequence. Here we can see an example for an amnosis notation for the sign good in German sign language, with the corresponding ground truth sign and the predicted one. The notation means, make a fist with a thumb up, where the direction of the thumb is up and to the left, the palm orientation is left and the hand is near the shoulders. Then slightly move it away from the body and hold it there for a moment. To get our data, we extract estimated pose key points using the pose estimation model open pose from the original videos. Each key point consists of a 2D location and the confidence of a model in its location. Then we process the extracted poses by first filtering out legs key points since they are irrelevant for a task and key points with low confidence, so the model does not learn from wrong or non-existing key point locations, as we can see here. Next, we trim meaningless frames by removing each leading or trailing frame in which there are not enough face or hands key points identified, as in the fade in and out frames in this example. Furthermore, as the signs have a dominant hand roll and a non-dominant hand roll, we flipped left-handed sign videos, so all videos are consistent. Finally, we normalize the poses so that the pose center is at the origin and the average distance between the shoulders is one. Some results of our model are presented here. The leftmost video is the original video. The middle one is the ground truth pose as extracted from the original video using open pose after our pre-processing. And the rightmost video is our prediction created from the amnosis sequence. Semi-transparent colors in the ground truth, as we can see here, indicate key points that are missing. Note that our predictions are complete and correct even when the ground truth is not. The full architecture of our model is presented here, and it is composed of two parts. The first part, the text processor, gets the amnosis sequence as input and encodes it using a transformer encoder. The encoded text is passed on both to a fully connected layer predicting the sequence length of the pose sequence and to the pose generator. Before moving on to the pose generator, we duplicate the reference frame into a constant sequence of this frame with the length of the sequence. During training, this is the ground truth length while at inference, it is the predicted one. Then, our pose generator gets the encoded text in the starting sequence and gradually updates the current sequence over T steps. In each step, the pose generator calls the refinement model, which encodes the step in the pose. Then, the text, step, and pose encodings are concatenated and passed on to a transformer encoder so that we get both self and cross attention together. The encoded pose is then projected back into the pose dimension, and then we get our predicted pose sequence, which is used to update the current pose sequence. Altogether, we get this full architecture. To train our model, we use a weighted mean squared error over the current predicted pose and an interpolation between the ground truth pose and the previously predicted one. We use the previous pose for the interpolation because this is the input to each prediction step. Recall that our data contains many missing key points. Hence, 
We use the confidence of the pose estimation model in each key point as weights in our loss function. This way, we avoid punishing the model for non-existing key points, and we punish it more for key points that we are more certain of their location. We scale the loss by the squared log of the number of steps and add a loss term for the sequence length to train it as well, since we don't use it during training. Altogether, we get the following complete loss term. To evaluate our model, we suggest a new distance function that measures the distance between pose sequences while considering missing key points. We use DTWMGE with our suggested distance function and call it NDTWMGE. To validate NDTWMGE, we compare it with existing distance measurements and show that it measures the distance between pose sequences in the most accurate way. Please refer to the paper for more details. We use NDTWMGE to evaluate our model in two ways. The first is distance ranks, where we compare a model with a previous work by training their model over our data and show that our model yields better results. The second is leave one out, where we train our model without one language at a time and test it over the left out language. This test shows that our model can generalize to unseen languages by yielding similar results when tested over a specific language, whether the model was trained on that language or not. Nevertheless, there is some degradation in the results, which we attribute to insufficient data and rare glyphs that only appear in the tested language. Even though our model achieves good results, it has some limitations. One example is wrong hand location due to local proximity, as we can see here. For example, in this case, the finger touches the mouth instead of the neck. Another limitation is when the motion is a challenging case for open pose. For example, when the amnosis calls for the hands to connect, the similar skin toes and occlusions confuse open pose. Also, when the motion is fast, tracking is degraded. For such cases, the training data isn't good enough for the model to learn the correct motions or hand shapes to produce. To conclude, we suggest the first method for animating amnosis into pose sequences using diverse data combined from three datasets with four different languages. We hope our work will lead the way toward developing a full pipeline for sign language production facilitating communication between the hearing and hearing impaired communities. We know we will keep working to make it happen. Thank you.